this is C. I'm so excited that I get to take part in your learning today. Uh, we're going to work on lesson 15 and lesson 15 is super cool because we're going to be drawing tape diagrams and we're going to be drawing arrays and we're going to be connecting them um, with various number sentences that show multiplication and uh, the reason why we're using arrays and tape diagrams is that we are showing the super fancy property called the commutative property. It sounds very, very um, advanced and it sounds very impressive because it is. It's a major property in mathematics. We're going to take a look at exactly what it means and why it's so important. So let's take a look. Yay! Order does not matter when you multiply numbers together you can flip them around. The commutative property allows us to do this wonderful thing. You fine people have actually been using the commutative property for a long time because guess what? This is also the rule in addition. You know that we can add one plus two and get three just as well as we can add two and one together to make three commutative property. It's pretty amazing. So here is an awesome problem where we really, really get to dive deeper into this fabulous commutative property. Uh, for this piece, we are instructed to label the tape diagrams. Keep in mind, tape diagram is just a fancy name for a rectangle chopped up into equal bits. Um, equal bits for now at least, and complete the equations. Then draw an array to represent the problems. Holy moly. So this is a lot, but we can handle it because we can do hard things. So what I'm seeing here, so I'm just going to kind of take this all in. So I see a tape diagram, and I see that this rectangle, this tape diagram, is cut into one, two, three, four, five, six equal pieces, and it looks like we have to finish the number sentence over here or the equation. So, I see immediately that the tape diagram is cut into six equal pieces, and it looks like I'm going to make four, it looks like we're actually told to put four, we can use circles for this, inside each of our one, two, three, four, five, six uh, equal pieces. So let's go ahead and draw that. So we're just very uh, easily going to label our tape diagram with four circles inside each of our six equal pieces. And I'm drawing circles. I'm trying to make them the same size. It doesn't always end up that way. So what we're left with is a lot of circles here. How many circles? Well, I have six copies of four circles. So what this first chunk of the tape diagram is showing us is four. Yep, we have four circles. And the mystery here is ultimately how many circles are we looking at in the end? Well, six times four, six copies of four is 24. We have 24 circles total. Four, eight, 12, 16, uh, 16, 20, and 24. Beautiful. So that looks great. We've filled in all of our missing pieces. Now we need to draw an array to represent the problems. So when we are practicing with our arrays, I want to make sure that we are doing this consistently the same way every time because our brains love when we repeat information. That repetitive nature is wonderful for learning. So I want you to think about this. When we're multiplying num numbers together and we're drawing an array, I want the first number to be the rows. These are rows. And then I want the second number to show the columns. These are columns. So we'll have six rows and four columns. Let's go ahead and show that in green. So what we're looking at here, six times four, we're going to show that in an array. Our first number, six, is going to show the rows. So I'm going to go ahead and make my six rows. We're going to do this the same way every time. That's really, really good for our brains. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. And how many columns do we want? Well, we want four columns. So I'm going to have one, two, three, four columns. I need a six by four array, so I'm going to fill in the rest of our array. 
see how the first number is going to be our rows. We have six rows. And then our second number, the four, is going to be our columns. You can see very clearly here that I have an array that represents six times four, or six copies of four. In total, my friends, we have 24 green circles. Awesome. So the commutative property tells us that the number in which we multiply numbers together doesn't matter. We can flip-flop them. So we're actually going to show that in our second tape diagram. Here, instead of 6 times 4, we're looking at 4 times something. These, this problem is related, so I already know that my something is going to be 6, but let's just make sure. How many do I have in my first box? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, beautiful. So we're looking at 4 times 6 here. We have another tape diagram, but it's organized differently. Up here we had 6 equal boxes. Down here we have 1, 2, 3, 4 equal boxes. Interesting. Up here we had 6 boxes with 4 circles in each box. Down here we have 4 boxes, and it looks like we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 circles in each box. So I'm going to continue filling out this tape diagram, and I'm showing that inside of each of each of our four boxes within the tape diagram, we have six circles. Cool. I'm going to fill in our missing pieces. So we said that that, indeed, six circles. So here we have one, two, three, four boxes. Within each box, we have six circles. All together, how many circles do we have? Well, four times six is 24. Our missing piece here in our tape diagram is 24. We are going to show this using an array. Keep in mind, my friends, when we're drawing an array, our first number, oops, that is not the first number, Mrs. C. Our first number is 4. Our first number, we are going to write our first number using the rows. We are going to show 4 in rows. And our second number, which is 6, we are going to show our second number in columns. So I will choose a different color for this. Let's go ahead and show 4 by 6 in an array. And again, 4 is going to be our rows. So I'm going to make 1, 2, 3, 4 circles showing our 1, 2, 3, 4 rows. And we're going to have 6 columns. So I'm going to show 6 circles straight across. Each of these circles will be the first circles in our columns. One, two, three, four, five, six. So right now I have plans for a four by six array. And I just need to fill in the rest of my columns and the rest of my rows. You can do this all the way across your columns, or you can do this bit by bit. It really does not matter how you fill in your rows and columns, just as long as we're being very neat and very mindful of our work. And in the end, we have one, two, three, four rows, because four is our first number. And then let's make sure we have one, two, three, four, five, six columns. Six is our second number. We've shown in two different ways Six copies of four is 24, or four copies of six is 24. Using the power of the commutative property, we're showing exactly what it means to make six copies of four or four copies of six. As it turns out, we can flip the numbers when we're multiplying. Order does not matter. Very cool. I was really excited to see this problem because this problem actually stars a kiddo in your class. This problem is about sage. Sage picks four flowers from her garden. Oh, I wonder what kind of flowers they are. Each flower has eight petals. I'm going to underline the numbers because they're important, but I'm going to keep reading. Draw and label a tape diagram to show how many petals there are in total. So something that is so important, friends, when we are reading and working on these word problems is that we understand the problem fully before we begin to solve. So two, four, six, oops, I need one more petal here. So what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking about Sage in her garden. She has four flowers and each of the flowers looks a little like this. This flower has one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight petals on it. So imagine four flowers with eight petals, and now we're trying to think about how many petals are there in total. Well, what I'm considering is that we have four copies of four times and four copies of are the same, the exact same thing. We're looking at four copies of eight. We have four flowers with eight petals, which means we're making four copies of eight. We need to figure out how many petals we have in total. Well, we can show this in a tape diagram. We can absolutely draw the entire picture. That would give a really wonderful visual. But what we're leaning towards are these tape diagrams. So I want to think about this tape diagram as a rectangle chopped into four equal pieces that represent each of our flowers. So this is one flower, and then this is another flower, another flower, another flower. You can see we have one, two, three, four flowers. How many petals do we have within each flower? Well, I have eight petals here, I have eight petals here, I have eight petals here, and I have eight petals here. You can see very clearly that we have one, two, three, four copies of eight. And now what we need to figure out, what, what is four times eight? I know that eight plus eight is 16. So I have two pairs of 16. Here's another way to look at this. And I can maybe do this in my head or maybe I can quickly uh, do some work over here and do 16 plus 16. Six plus six is 12. Bring over our 10. One plus one plus one is three. So our friend Sage has 32 petals in total in her garden. Thanks for sharing that one with us. Friends, are you ready for your mission? Number one, complete number four for lesson 15. That's the lesson we're working on today. And show it to Mrs. Gilmore. Second part of your mission today, check in the secret word with Mrs. Gilmore. The secret word today is llama. Finally, log into Google Classroom for your extension activity. Have a great day. Thanks for working with me today.